Hi. The series of videos under the heading of Suggestions for in-class activities are based on two prerequisites. Here is the first. The recommendations for the organization of in-class meetings require the use of the inverted classroom model. That is, students should have worked through the respective content prior to the in-class meeting. Thus, the in-class meetings are not instructional anymore, but purely practical. And the second prerequisite is that the digital content that students have to work through prior to an in-class meeting is a combination of video, multimedia and print. In other words, for each suggestions for in-class activities, there is at least one e-lecture and one e-learning unit on the Virtual Linguistics Campus. This class, this particular in-class meeting, is special in many ways. First, this is the first unit of the class and maybe even the first class in linguistics at all. So the students see their lecturer for the first time in person. Hence, in contrast to what we normally do in class, a short introduction about oneself could be very useful for your students. Secondly, irrespective of the student's involvement, we have to assume that they have little or no prior knowledge in linguistics or phonetics. So, this entire field here is by and large unknown to them. So we cannot build on that. All they know is contained in the video Phonetics and Overview and in the corresponding e-learning unit on the Virtual Linguistics Campus. And furthermore, students might not be too familiar with the inverted classroom model yet. So, let's give them a chance to familiarize themselves with this approach towards teaching and learning and allow a bit more repetition in the first in-class meeting than you would normally do. With all this in mind, this is what I think one should do in class. As usual, you should first of all define the goals of the in-class meeting. We've already defined the special aspects. So one thing we have to do is we have to clarify what phonetics really is. And then we will look at speech anatomy, at some selected aspects because the entire topic is introduced in the e-learning unit and in the e-lecture. And then of course, and this is very important, we will practice. Well, and do one thing. Tell your students that the first three sessions will be hard, at least as far as terminology is concerned. They will be flooded with new terms, with terms like alveolar, glottalic, pharyngeal and so on and so forth. So point out to them that they can use all sorts of techniques that ease these difficulties in class. For example, they could use our workbooks. There is a workbook for this class which you can obtain on the Virtual Linguistics Campus. Or they could take their notes, their printouts, the interactive whiteboard contents and so on and so forth. Before you start with the practical, about 25% and that's only a rule of thumb of the in-class time should be reserved for questions that the students might want to ask about the virtual session, the e-lecture or the workbook content. Now these questions should be collected for future classes and for optional revisions of the online content. Once this part has been finished, the phase of practicing starts. So, here are some possible questions. Just write them down and collect them. So, for example, your students might want to know why acoustic and auditory Phonetics are interdisciplinary. Well, collect this question, discuss it later on, or postpone it until next time. 
and now you can start with the content that is with practicing now the first task is to define the field of phonetics you have to do that again to make sure that everyone knows how the field is subdivided you could for example do it by dragging some labels around if you have a wonderful Promethean active board like I have so phonetics the head term with a capital P consists of two sub branches namely of phonetics spelled with a small p the study of speech sounds and phonology the study of speech sounds in a particular language and then you could go on you could say okay how are these fields subdivided well and you could go on dragging things around for example we know that there's a branch called articulatory phonetics one called auditory phonetics one called acoustic phonetics and I always keep mentioning that you can associate these branches with three P's with production with perception and with physics well and if you have graphics or diagrams or images you can ask your students to come to the front and associate them with these branches of phonetics and then I think everything thing should be clear by and large at least but you could go into this as much as you like now a second task could be to look at these three sub branches so here we have the branches of um, auditory phonetics of acoustic phonetics symbolized by the synthesizer and some other machines and articulatory phonetics and of course you could now do two things either you could define the two branches which are not the subject of this class auditory and acoustic phonetics and tell your students more about these for mere reasons of interest or you could concentrate on practicing the main principles of articulatory phonetics and in fact this is what we suggest here so we will concentrate on this branch of phonetics for example we could deal with and that's a third task we could deal with airstream mechanisms tell your students how to produce a pulmonic airstream well everyone can do that because we normally are capable of breathing you could do one thing which is of interest let me pick up a rubber band now what you could do is you could show your students how you can create a sound by blowing air through a rubber band like this okay having done that your students might have some sort of understanding how the vocal cords vibrate when pulmonic air goes through them and creates the initial sound input to the production of speech sounds well defined terms like glottalic airstream and velaric airstream by showing your students how to produce them the glottalic airstream for example by pretending to lift some heavy weight like this <laughs> now the glottis is closed and then you can pre uh, produce a second closure in the mouth like this <laughs> and release it and so you have produced an ejective consonant without very much uh, without a big problem at all or you could produce a velaric airstream by pretending you drink something with a straw like this and here you are so your students already have some idea how these more or less exotic airstreams have to be created finally let your students write down some words on the board let them come to the front and write down let's say the word man and ask them how many vowels and how many consonants are contained in them well you could add the phonetic code without explaining it at all and could say okay we have in fact two consonants here and one vowel and then you could give them another word for example what would they think about the word thick well 
also graphically, and that's all they have been used to up to this point, they would say we have four consonants and we have one vowel. But if you represent the whole thing phonetically, then immediately you will see the result is something like this. And they will come up with the same solution. So again, we have one consonant here, one consonant there, and a vowel in the middle. So this already gives them a feeling what has to be done in phonetics because orthography, and that's one thing they will learn, is not the basis for our decision about the sound structure of human speech. Without explaining too much about transcription, speculate about vowels, consonants, places of articulation and so on. This might be considered to be a preparation already for the next unit about consonants. Well, the time required for these exercises, activities and tasks is totally up to you. According to my experience, you should make sure that the terminology is clear. For example, the difference between various airstream types, the precise role of the glottis and so on and so forth. And last but not least, enrich the in-class phase with anecdotes about languages and their specific sounds. For example, this is interesting here, use some examples from the language index. For example, this guy here, who's just fantastic and who produces wonderful, wonderful clicks in his language, Osa. So let's just listen. Okay. Uh, just the Osa part. Yeah. And what does it mean in English? Uh, this morning I was chased by skunks, so I ran to Kondile's house. His father did not know that I was in trouble, so he almost hit me with a stick on the head. And I was like, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? Well, the Language Index of the Virtual Linguistics Campus is of enormous help in the phonetics class. Well, and if you want more exercises, just use the questions on the VLC practical sheet associated with this unit. That's all. Thank you very much.